Welcome to Arcadia. This is the DM's Den, my series dedicated to dungeon mastering and to storytelling in general. There is this general advice for YouTubers never to date their videos. I'm going to ignore that advice this time. First, because I don't really care that much, but more importantly, because I feel like I have something to say about what's happening in the world right now. Some things are just that big uh, that they can't be ignored. However, this is still a channel about storytelling and RPGs, so I want to keep things aligned with that, at the very least so that when people watch this video in the future, when this whole mess has already been solved in the best, most diplomatic way possible, let us hope, that it can still be useful as some game or writing advice, but also as actual knowledge to make people more informed, to encourage them to read between the lines and to remind us all to think for ourselves and recognize dangerous patterns. But be mindful that I will be sharing some of my thoughts and feelings about the current situation in Europe. That situation being, of course, the war between Russia and Ukraine. But rest assured that I will tell you when I stop talking about games and history and touch on the more recent events so that you can stop watching if you don't want to hear that or if you feel like that would cause you harm. And please bear in mind that I am making this video without any knowledge about the future, which at the time you're watching this will be your past. I don't know what's going to happen, I don't mean to offend or harm anyone, my knowledge is far from bulletproof, so as usual, be critical, but also be kind in case my words become weird in the light of some future development or context that is yet to happen and that I can't foresee. Today we talk about how nations go to war. It can be said that the state of peace is a civilized construct. The natural state of living creatures is war or competition. That is true at a biological level. Animals are programmed to compete over limited resources. Not only this is what we often observe in nature, it is actually a mathematical inference from the game theory applied to biological models of fight for survival. It is not surprising that humans behave in the same way, although our ability to think and to communicate makes it easier to establish peaceful relationships and share the limited resources instead of fighting over them and risking injury. But as also demonstrated by the game theory, and by common sense you could say, the greater the difference of power between the two competitors, the less likely this middle ground is to be achieved. Makes sense, right? If you're a lion and if you're competing with a rat over a piece of meat, why share with a rat when you can just take the whole thing with little to no consequence? Bear with me, I promise this will tie into RPGs and narrative storytelling. I think I don't need to stress this much more. You get it. Humans have a natural tendency for conflict, and what we call peace is actually a product of our intelligence and ability to establish mutually beneficial relationships to avoid the worst parts of confrontation and still get some benefits. And it's very hard to achieve, and even harder to maintain. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can investigate more about the life and death of Otto von Bismarck, a man who you could say kinda caused World War I because he was not alive to keep the peace. I can wholeheartedly recommend Extra History's videos on Bismarck and also, by the way, on World War I seminal tragedy about how hard it is to keep peace and about how all it takes is for the first domino to fall. If you want more game-related videos, you can always check on Matt Colville's video The Politics of Peace, I think it was called but I always assume that people that come to this channel are well aware of our good friend and mentor Colville. But the thing is, when these behavioral models are applied to nations instead of animals, it gets tricky. Nations have a similar kind of needs, desires and ambitions as individual creatures, the need for more territory, for more food, more precious resources, etc. But when it comes to waging war, there is much more to be aware of. See. There's this common misconception, especially when we talk about medieval times, that nations would go to war whenever they wanted. That is far from the truth. Countries couldn't go to war just because they felt like it or because they wanted something that the neighbors had. They had to have a valid reason to do so, or at least an excuse, 
something to convince all the other nations of the world and their own people that their conflict was justified. A causus belli. This happens because the theater of operations for a civilized country is much wider and there's always a certain degree of interdependence between all the surrounding nations. And to attack one of those nations, the public opinion of the remaining ones must be considered. Will they approve? Will they condemn? Will they attack in response? Is any of them allied with the attacked country? A nation must even be aware of public opinion within its own people to avoid riots and coups. A country going to war must have the approval or at least the complacency of its population. Think about this scaled down version of that scenario. If you happen to be a really bad person and you wanted to punch one of your friends for whatever reason, would you do it out of the blue? Probably not. Your other friends would jump on you, try to restrain you, ask what the hell was wrong with you, and probably even be mad at you for a while over that outburst of violence, and rightfully so. But what if you told everyone that that friend broke something that was really important to you, really dear? Attacking them is still very much wrong, but maybe they would think twice before getting in the middle of you too. Some might even think that you had the right to be violent, even though they would be wrong. Again, stick with me, this is still going to be relevant for games and stories. This happened historically. Almost every time a civilized country went to war, they had to justify it in some way. They could say that the country's rightful ruler was in fact another person, and as such, they would win back that nation on that person's behalf. They could claim an assassination attempt was made on their ruler by the rival nation, which was an act of war, and as such justify their assault. Or they could even use reconquest of lost territory as a motive for the conflict. Invasion of a neighboring country without a valid casus belli was severely condemned. This was called a war of aggression and was one of the most infamous actions a ruler could take. Having a recognized casus belli was extremely desired. For example, in the early 15th century, Henry V went to considerable lengths to have his casus belli for the invasion of France recognized by the Pope. This would safeguard his plans and ensure that all the other European powers wouldn't rally against them. This oversimplification might seem positive to you. After all, it implies that there has to be a valid reason for war to happen. Unfortunately, like we established, humans have a tendency for conflict. And when there is no reason to go to war, people will make one. After all, all that's needed is an excuse. History tends to be written by the victors, so the winning factions always have privileged positions to consolidate their propaganda as truth. Mostly because there are no enemies left to challenge that. Any of the hypothetical scenarios that I presented a while ago can and were easily falsified. The records that prove that the rightful heir to the kingdom is this other guy? Forged. They were falsified by a skillful scribe. The assassination attempt? Staged. A random guy was killed, dressed in the enemy's uniform, and presented to the people as a killed assassin. The reconquest of lost territory? Sometimes illegal. The country being attacked was part of the attacking nation at some point in time, but had since become a legitimate, independent nation. But the attackers unilaterally decided not to recognize that sovereignty. In the end, this makes that reconquest nothing but an invasion. History is filled with these false pretexts for war. Hell, that's how World War II started, with the Gleiwitz incident, I think that's the way you pronounce it. A false flag attack by the German Reich to justify the invasion of Poland. The Nazis staged an attack by the Polish, which was actually perpetrated by German operatives in Polish uniforms, and boom, now the Reich has a reason to declare war to Poland and invade. So, where does all of this come into play in RPGs? Well, put simply, remember to use it. This mostly applies to the world-building part. Remember that wars with no reason will seem shallow and might break your player's immersion. If you tell them that you are in the Kingdom of Ragnar, which is at war with the Kingdom of Nordia, to your players that's just a fact, no weight to it. They will hear it, maybe even write a note about it, but not much more. Which is good, but why settle for the good when you can reach for the best? If you tell them 
The Kingdom of Ragnar has declared war to Norgia a few months ago, after this ex-Duchy of Ragnar decided to unilaterally declare their independence and ban the people of Ragnar from the northern territories, keeping all its riches and resources for themselves, now they will have an opinion. Based on the Kazu's belly they were given, they will side with one side or the other. Maybe they'll even stay neutral, but these details will feel more human and real to them than a simple info dump about your setting. It will feel like it wasn't you artificially describing the game world in third person, because the opinion will be created in their minds by them, and that means it's almost as if they were experiencing this world in first person. Also remember that the Kazu's belly may not always be true. Maybe when the players travel all the way to Norgia to assassinate the rebel king, they discover that in fact that region was being abused by the Queen of Ragnar for decades and were pushed to the point of rebellion. This was not a unilateral declaration of independence, it was a revolution over the disrespect for basic human rights. The Kazu's belly they were presented with was nothing more than propaganda to brainwash the citizens. Giving a war in your world a casus belly, even more so if it's fake, can provide you with loads of story hooks. What will the heroes do now? Will they fulfill their mission? Will they side with Norgia and help defend it? But the truth is, that doesn't really matter, because you already got the result you were gunning for, this new layer of death that makes your story that much real, and all because of two simple things. You made it more real by portraying warring nations more closely to how they are in reality, which feeds the willing suspension of disbelief, and you created an emotional connection between your players and this conflict by stealthily encouraging them to take a position or at least an opinion. And players who feel attached to a cause or a quest are always happier players. I think that is it for the game advice. In fact, I could talk more about it, but I think that's the core message. If this was all you came here for, thank you for watching. You can stop watching the video now because there are some things that I feel like I need to say. Because we are currently witnessing the most dangerous armed conflict in Europe since World War II, which to me, as a European, is terrifying. But certainly not as terrifying as it is for millions of Ukrainian souls witnessing their home be invaded and bombed by airstrikes, and their loved ones taking up arms to defend everything they know, all with that slow march of an unprovoked nation getting closer by the day. If you can't take something out of this video, it's that nations need a casus belli to go to war. This is what happened with Russia when Putin unilaterally declared the independence of two regions in Ukrainian Donbass and moved his troops to secure and defend them. According to his logic, this isn't a war, it's a special military operation to defend two young republics, and it's not Ukrainian territory he invaded, he just stepped into the lands of his new neighbors Donetsk and Lugansk. If Ukraine takes up arms and fights for territory that is totally not theirs, then Putin has no other choice than fighting back. He really is the good guy here. But what I also hope you take from this video is that nations can and will forge their casus belli if they really want to. And what right does Putin have to unilaterally declare two regions of a foreign country as independent, bypassing all formal and proper diplomatic channels? Why would he station his military in the border with Donbas, with ambulances and a blood bank, if he didn't expect to engage in extensive armed conflict? And how does the bombing of civilian structures and residential buildings across Ukraine contribute in any way to his cause? Unless, of course, if his cause is war. It's clear for everyone not brainwashed by false propaganda that Putin has a different agenda than the one he claimed for this war, because it is a war, and an awful one at that. Between the unprovoked invasion, the indiscriminate bombing of residential areas, the irresponsible attacks on nuclear power plants, the hundreds of civilian casualties including dozens of children and the threat of nuclear warfare, there is already enough done to assure that Putin will not be remembered kindly by history. What I'd like to say with this video is that we should look between the lines and understand the true reason why all of this is happening. And I'd also like to say that I'm just sorry that all of this is happening. I could never imagine that all of this would unfold a month or two ago, especially considering how hard the past two years have been for the world. 
it makes me scared to think about the future and sad to think about all the people who will suffer because the order is coming from the Kremlin. This reminds me of a quote by Eric Hartman, War is a place where young people who don't know each other and don't hate each other kill each other by decisions of old people who know each other, hate each other, but don't kill each other. So, to all Ukrainians, I'd just like to share my respect and my most sincere wishes that, even though a catastrophe has already happened, that there is a diplomatic solution in the future that avoids further bloodshed. Know that the world is with you. The world is ready to receive you while you can't be in your home safely. I, I wish you can all get to safety and that this nightmare ends as soon as possible for you. And to the Russians, I'd also like to share my admiration for all the protests happening, especially in St. Petersburg. It takes real courage to do what you are doing in your country knowing what the consequences are. Please, remember that you are not your government. Believe in independent sources of information over the censored propaganda. And always be mindful that this operation, regardless of what some people call it, is a war and children are dying because of it. And for the rest of the world, I'd like to call you to action. Since this began, I've been trying to help wherever I can with the humanitarian efforts. I encourage you to do the same. And I'd also like to remind you all that Russians are not the Russian government, and they shouldn't be blamed by the decisions some politicians are making back home. I just really hope things are solved soon in the best way possible. I don't see how, but I can only hope. I feel scared for the world. I know that as a fact, that regardless of the resolution of this war, it will be a very different world afterwards than it was a few months ago. I can only hope that this nightmare will end soon. As a final recommendation, I strongly encourage everyone to watch Doctor Who, specifically the Zygon Inversion episode. I want to put a clip in here because the speech the Doctor delivers on war is probably too big for me to get away with copyrights, but I will give you a small bit of it. When you fire that first shot, no matter how you feel, you have no idea who's going to die. You don't know whose children are going to scream and burn. How many hearts will be broken? How many lives shattered? How much blood will spill until everybody does what they were always going to do from the very beginning? Sit down and talk. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Always try to be nice, but never fail to be kind.